Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify, Apple, or Google, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which is a great crypto platform that I've been using since 2017, so I can certainly vouch for this platform. They have 10 plus million users, 250 plus cryptocurrencies, and they're available in 150 countries. You can also trade precious metals and equities on this platform. If you'd like to learn more, please visit the link in the description. Folks, just a quick reminder, a great way to support the podcast is to buy the official podcast merchandise. A link will be in the description. You can also buy some Fire Gary Genser gear, so be sure to check that out. All right, folks, let's start with Bitcoin and what is it going to do next? What happens to Bitcoin this coming week? Well, folks, we've had a big run up. Uh, we see this huge green candle here on the daily chart. It's even very or more bullish on the weekly chart. If we look at it here, a very big green candle. And I think we're going to see Bitcoin continue a little bit more upwards. Um, you know, we, we might touch like 34K and then consolidate and then continue moving upwards um, after the consolidation. Now, I think Bitcoin's going to go to a range of about 40K, possibly higher. Here's what one analyst is saying. And this is from Crypto Wizard, who has a really nice following on Twitter. Uh, he says, what's next for Bitcoin? 189 days since I made these calls. At the time, Bitcoin was at $16,600 with panic and peak capitulation. Influencers said to sell the bottom. I said the dollar cost average. Bitcoin hit a new high for 2023. I stand by the call of 40K this year. I say it in advance. So he, he shared his chart going back to uh, late December into early 2023, showing uh, the, the retracement move here. And of course, we're seeing this pattern play out similar to 2019. Now, I want to make sure I say this, guys. There are no guarantees and there are no certainties. We are looking at probabilities here. This is a thesis. So sometimes people come back and say, you said we're going to go to 40 and it didn't happen. Well, I'm saying there's a probability. I'm not saying there's a definitive guaranteed certainty here. So please understand that uh, no one has a crystal ball but we can look at the facts, the, the fundamentals and the technical analysis and make a call, right? Form a thesis. And that's investing. That's pretty much what do you got to look? What's the highest probability of a scenario playing out? And I think there's a high probability of Bitcoin going to 40K, rolling over, testing the lows again. Then we continue to move slow and steadily upwards into the Bitcoin halving of next year. Now, folks, is Gary Genser trying to crash Bitcoin? Well, here the SEC approved another Bitcoin futures ETF. So let me recap something for you. The SEC has approved a shorts ETF a Bitcoin futures ETF. These were years ago. And of course, those can be used to short Bitcoin. But he has not approved a spot Bitcoin ETF. We know BlackRock just filed for their first Bitcoin spot ETF, uh, many others as well, Wisdom Tree, Invesco, and so forth. And Grayscale was denied many times. I think it was like 13 to 14 applicants were denied for a Bitcoin spot ETF. Grayscale is suing the SEC because of that spot ETF denial. Well, here, leverage Bitcoin futures ETF to start trading Tuesday, sponsor says. Volatility shares says its 2x leverage Bitcoin futures exchange traded fund will be based on CME Bitcoin futures prices. Now, keyword there, it's a Bitcoin futures and it's a, lever it's a 2x leverage. So what does that mean? It gives these guys more opportunities to short Bitcoin. See what Gary Genser is up to, my friends? He's trying to slow this thing down, uh, doesn't want it to go anywhere. And uh, I think that's because we've seen the scenario play out of killed the startup incumbents, or I should say killed the startups, not the incumbents, excuse me, which is Coinbase, Binance, Paxos, all these crypto companies and exchanges allow BlackRock, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Citadel, Deutsche Bank, and all the other big TradFi incumbents to come in and take over. And I think uh, this will you know, allow them to short the hell out of Bitcoin. However, I do believe eventually they will approve a spot Bitcoin ETF because once again, he's opening the doors for BlackRock and these big players, right? He doesn't want the wing 
Winkle Boss Twins to have a, a Bitcoin spot ETF. He doesn't want Grayscale to have a Bitcoin spot ETF. So that's the game that's at play here. So Volatility Shares 2x Bitcoin Strategy ETF uh, will become the first leveraged crypto ETF available in the United States after the US SEC let it go effective on Friday. An executive company told an exec at the company told Coindesk. The regulator has not denied the application for the 2x ETF volatility shares chief investment officer Stuart Barton said paving the way for its launch this this upcoming Tuesday he said it's exciting to see digital assets in the ETF wrapper um and a leveraged 2x ETF allows customers to gain bitcoin exposure by only putting up half the value of bitcoin a prospectus filing said the ETF would correspond with the CME Bitcoin Futures Daily Roll Index. This comes in the wake of Bitcoin's value steadily rising past 30K after multiple traditional financial investment companies like BlackRock filed an application for spot ETFs with the SEC. So I think the game plan here, Gary approves, of course, a sh another futures ETF, which allows you to short, right, to drive the price down. And then I think he'll allow his buddies to scoop up at the cheap and the lows, and then they'll approve a spot ETF. I think that's what's going to happen because his whole entire plan was to allow these Wall Street TradFi incumbents to come in and take over, and we're seeing that play out. Now, <laughs> the the Winklevoss twins, Cameron and Tyler, they have been uh, on the offensive, criticizing Gary, calling him out, and I love it. I love that the industry is going on the offensive. Uh, Coinbase is suing the SEC. We see Binance is going after them, hiring top lawyers and calling the SEC out on their lies and hypocrisy. Here's what Cameron Winklevoss had to say. Uh, almost feeling sorry for Gary Genser must be so tiring talking out of both sides of your mouth. May 2021. Exchanges trading in these crypto assets do not have a regulatory framework either at the SEC or our sister agency, the CFTC. June 2023, they know how to register. <laughs> and he provided the screenshots he highlighted uh, where Gary Genser has been lying. And, you know, you see the, the flip flopping, right? This is what we've been talking about. This is why I call Gary Genser a scumbag regulator, a corrupt scumbag regulator. And I think a lot of the industry is waking up, they're taking off the gloves because because we're not dealing who's someone with good faith here. It, this guy does not abide by the law. What did Judge Sarah Nutburn say in the Ripple S uh, SEC lawsuit? The SEC lacks faithful allegiance to the law. Just imagine that a judge is saying that about a government agency, which is supposed to protect investors. Now, uh, even uh, some of the TradFi folks are saying the SEC is not doing a good job. Here's the headline. SEC should stop picking winners. This is coming from a Van Eck executive. CBOE filing on behalf of Van Eck's planned Bitcoin ETF contains surveillance sharing agreement, details similar to BlackRock's proposed product. So uh, Van Eck has been one of the folks who's been denied in the past as well, uh, along with Bitwise and Wisdom Tree and so forth. And these guys are coming out saying, uh, you know, this this is ridiculous. We're seeing uh, the SEC picking winners and losers. It's just been a lot of confusion. Now, here's what Tyler Winklevoss had to say regarding Gemini and their expansion to other parts of the world, um, specifically here in Hong Kong. Uh, Tyler said, Hong Kong is ready to lead in crypto. Had a great meeting with the SFC, Hong Kong's regulator for crypto, during Gemini's world tour. Very encouraged with their thoughtful and clear approach. Many uh, IMP industry players in making Hong Kong home and a vibrant ecosystem is developing here. Exciting. And uh, he posted a photo of him and his brother, his twin brother, of course, um, and with some other members or folks in Hong Kong. So guys, Hong Kong is controlled by China. China is doing a 180 on crypto. And I think they recognize the, the US is dropping the ball right now. So they're going to you know, open their doors. They have already, already opened up retail trading. Um, they've opened up financial services and banking. Uh, they put out a white paper and all these things. And uh, here, a lot of funds, exchanges, and crypto companies are uh, uh, moving to these other jurisdictions. Um, here, Faryad Shiraz, or Shirzad, if I'm saying that right, Chief Policy Officer at Coinbase, 
he tweeted out regarding what the, the Tyler Winklevoss shared here. He said, Hong Kong decides to adopt crypto into its financial system late last year. In under eight months, they have rules in place and a regulator committed to working constructively with the industry. The race to lead on crypto is on, even if the US government isn't paying attention. So the rest of the world is moving on. This is why I'm still bullish on crypto. I don't care what Gary Genser does. I don't care you know, what the headwinds we're facing right now. Yes, it sucks in a sense of uh, it, it's frustrating to see that's happening here in the country I live in, but I'm bullish on the long-term view of crypto because this is a global asset class. It is not dependent on the United States. And we know the game, right? We know the game, guys. Gary Genser was just putting up roadblocks, trying to kill out the startups to allow BlackRock and these big players to come in. So eventually the tide will turn as, as these uh, incumbent players take their position. Now, Tyler Winklevoss also tweeted out a photo of Gary Genser and Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> uh, so everybody's been trolling Gary and Elizabeth Warren. He, he put the comments here with that photo. Elizabeth Warren says, first, pretend that they come in and register and then sue them all. Then green light the trad five firms. Got it? Genser says, got it. <laughs> Once again, folks, if you have some level of normal IQ, average IQ, common sense and reasoning, right? You will see what is happening here. How can these two, two things be happening in parallel, right? Crypto getting uh, all these enforcement actions, all these crypto startups while the big players step in and launch their services. Now, Jeremy Allaire, CEO of Circle, which is the creator of the USDC stablecoin, uh, he recently testified before Congress. He said, other governments are regulating digital dollars before the US itself even has a policy. It's time to act. So I love that these guys are coming out, speaking out and putting the pressure on, on Congress because Congress has to pass the, the, the regulations. Now, guys, uh, there is a big theory out there that possibly USDC could be the digital dollar. Um, it would make sense. The government could easily adopt it. USDC is on different blockchains. In fact, they recently launched on Stellar. So here, Jeremy Allaire said, this is a big deal. Stellar has unlocked wallets and on and off ramps on a massive scale internationally. This provides a superb, fast, and in inexpensive way to move USDC globally and easily on and off ramp using cash. Congrats, Coinbase and Stellar. So uh, USDC to stablecoin, once again, on multiple blockchains, uh, Circle is regulated and a lot of their reserves are include US treasuries. So it's not far-fetched to say, hey, the Fed could partner with Circle and use, use USDC, which is uh, the second largest stable coin in the world um, and is pretty much you know globally distributed at this point as the digital dollar. I think it's certainly possible. Now, it could be wrong, right? The Fed could go create the, a, a unique CBDC or whatever it may be, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. So time will tell. Now, we got some interesting FTX news. FTX files suit against Sam Beckman frieds old pals in a $700 million clawback attempt. Surrendered and clawback funds typically go toward repaying customers, victims, and creditors. So that's good. You know, to get, we got to get the um, users and all, all these uh, folks who have been using FTX and got, you know, lost their money because of the fraud Sam Bankman fried uh, committed and which Gary Genser allowed to happen because he met with Sam Bankman fried and FTX officials multiple times. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through all the details here. You guys can certainly read up on it, but they're gonna, it looks like they're going to go after uh, some, some folks and try to claw back some money here. Uh, we got news here. The SEC will forego uh, $30 million block five penalty until investors are repaid. Remember when we were complaining about this, guys, and I was like, tweet at the SEC, because how can they go in and try to take their penalty when this company is bankrupt and they have to give back users money? Like, what the hell is this, right? You're supposed to represent the investors and you're trying to go in and grab your fees and people haven't gotten their funds back. You know, it's like a big middle finger to to investors. So I'm glad the pressure we put out there, guys, we use social media, we contact our representatives and, um, you know, we, we make sure that this government agency is accountable to us. So uh, great to see that, that, you know, they're not trying to 
grab their money or the penalties here before customers get their funds. Well, folks, that's the news. Uh, what are your thoughts on Gary Gensler's plan here with this leverage Bitcoin futures ETF? I think the plan is to short, to allow the, these folks to short the hell out of Bitcoin. And look at the timing of it, right? Bitcoin's going into its retracement. You know they're going to short the hell out of it once it hits that retracement peak. So be prepared. But you know this is why you want to know the news, the facts. You want to study the charts because all of these things together give you a holistic view of the market and how to plan. So as I've been saying, Bitcoin hits 40K, I'm taking profits off the table, taking profits from some altcoins. I let it roll over, test the lows, boom, dollar cost average, starting to accumulate, get ready for the Bitcoin having next year. Once again, do your own research. That's not financial advice. Please learn the charts. Please learn the market cycles for yourselves. And uh, obviously, be risk averse. Don't invest your entire life savings in crypto. Uh, I, I, I've said it many times. I've, I have my 401k. I have my savings. I have uh, investments in stocks. I have an investment property I rent out. So I don't put all my money in crypto. Is there a lot of my money in crypto? Yes, because right? I'm bullish on this asset class and, and uh, it has made me some very nice returns, but I'm not stupid where I'm taking my life savings out of my bank account and throwing all the crypto. Of course not, guys. You know, you, you got to be smart, right? Be be balanced in your approach. Don't, don't get emotional. Don't FOMO. Uh, just learn the charts and uh, don't get caught in the trap. Oh, I'm going to be a millionaire overnight. That, no, that stuff, be careful with that, right? You may read headlines, someone bought a meme coin for a hundred bucks and it made them a millionaire. That's that's the outlier. So please, that has not happened to everybody. Uh, you know, uh, Just be careful. Now, uh, y y this can take years. So it took me years to make you know, a lot of money. Uh, I had to be patient. I had to accumulate. And I'm doing the same now for the next macro bull market. All right, folks, hit the thumbs up button, hit the five-star button on the podcast platforms, and I'll talk to you all later.